I have a son. What? I have a son, but I'd never met or seen him before. Hold on, hang on a minute. Sarpa's a dad. Why haven't we been told this before? Now, given his past, given the fact that he slept with over 2,500 women, I'm not exactly surprised that he has an estranged son. Only, it's not just that. You see, Sarpa wants more children with Shekinah. But he's gonna have to pick one or the other. Is it her or a baby? Sarpa needs to figure out what's more important to him. Does he want to have a child or does he want to be with me? Because he cannot do both. This feels like a fever dream. Sarpa's gone from self-proclaimed bad boy, this player, to now wanting kids with a woman he's only just committed to. I mean, it's just crazy. He could hardly commit to buying a new bed until Shekinah pressured him. How the heck does he think they're committed enough and stable enough to start having children? But when we join them in this episode, it turns out things are progressing between the two of them. In fact, the time has come for Shekinah to meet Sarpa's family. I am only child of my parents, so my cousins, we grew up like brother and sister. Introducing Shekinah is a big deal for me. Now, after spending the last few decades of his life as a semi-professional womanizer, I'm pretty sure his family never thought they'd see this day. I mean, you really wouldn't blame his family for thinking Shekinah's a paid actress or something. But the way his cousins are acting, they're really putting Shekinah in the hot seat. You see, they start to ask all of these invasive personal questions that relatives have a habit of asking. And those only intensify when they find out that Shekinah already has a child. So you are uh, done being mother? <laughs> no, never. <laughs> okay. never. No, I don't mean with yeah. your own child. Uh, maybe I'm being old fashioned here, but whatever happened to small talk? Shekinah's hardly even sat down yet, but already they're asking whether or not she's going to produce an heir to Sarpa's throne. It's crazy. Now, while some of Sarpa's family fall just short of asking about her egg count, it's clear that others are very uncomfortable about how personal this has all become. It's really none of their business. But I would love, love him to see he as a dad. The most important, what does he want? This is also important. Maybe he's happy like this and they will be happy like this. Look, let's be clear here. It took 40 odd years for Sarpa to commit to being with just one woman. He's still even now bragging about how he used to sleep with three women a day. So the idea of committing to raising a child until they're 18 years old seems like a prison sentence for a guy like Sarpa. It took both Shekinah and her sister to beg him just to post an Instagram picture picture. There's just no way he'd be willing to change his lifestyle so much to welcome kids, right? If you love someone, especially in a relationship, you want a kid from him or her. I mean, it's so simple. We have to plan something. Sorry, what? My jaw is on the floor. Call me crazy, but I'm not sure the world or even Shekinah is ready for mini Sarpas running around. Now, in any case, Sarpa conveniently changes the subject. He begins to explain about the Turkish festival they're here to celebrate. This is a festival dedicated to digging deep and externalizing your deepest wishes. We write wishes to papers and bury them under trees and hope that wishes come true. Now, you might say that Shekinah has already got her wish, and then some. After months of begging Sarpa to post a photo of the two of them to his Instagram, he finally relented. He's finally gone public with her. And I'm willing to bet the fact that Sarpa's cousin has finally stopped quizzing her about kids is also an answer to all of her prayers. But on the other hand, Sarpa becomes very secretive about what he's written on his piece of paper. In fact, he begins to hint at something in the most over-the-top fashion. You have to write names, you have to be precise. Oh. I don't know his name, that's the problem. His name? Wait a second, what? Oh, for God's sake, Sarpa, the way you're teasing this out is like a scene from a soap opera. The guy just can't do anything with a shred of sincerity. 
Everything he does just feels so melodramatic. Like the way he apologised to Shariah. Like, make no mistake, what he says next, the way he says it, it's all for shock value. I have a son. What? I have a son, but I'd never met or seen him before. Yeah, let's be honest here. For as hard as he tried to shock us with that, I don't think anyone's exactly surprised. This is a guy who's clearly spent most of his life bedding anything that moves. But spare a thought for Shekinah. She obviously thought that Sarpa's drawing was of the two of them. She thought he was wishing they'd live happily ever after. But thankfully, if there's a silver lining to this, it's the fact that Sarpa has at least told Shekinah about his child before. He's not totally blindsiding her here. A few months after Sarpa and I started dating, he revealed something to me about his past. He hasn't told very many people about it. So Sarpa begins telling his rather bewildered looking family about how this all came to be. He tells them about the fact that when he was 18 years old, he accidentally got a lady pregnant. That means that today he has a child, a son in his 20s, who tragically he's never even met. On 1998, when I was on a summer vacation, I met with a Russian lady. We had a one week of vacation together and so many times we had sex. Now, Sarpa's version of events, the way he describes it, is the lady tried to manipulate him. He claims that she really wanted to get pregnant with his child. And apparently when she popped up in Sarpa's inbox with news that she was pregnant a few months later, Sarpa says he completely freaked out. Now, given that they'd only exchanged email addresses, for Sarpa, there was a very quick, easy, and extremely irresponsible way to fix his mistake. I really scared a lot, and I deleted my email, oh, and I forgot it. So you lost track of Yeah, it. I lost track. Sorry, but it's very hard to have any respect for a man that acts like that. Still, out of sight, out of mind as far as Sarpa was concerned. Only that spur of the moment decision has cost Sarpa the chance of knowing his only child. Now, despite the over the top way that he recounts this story, he does seem pretty cut up about the fact that he hasn't been able to right his wrongs. But now that his son is an adult, he really hopes that he might be able to get to meet him. I was a little regretful and I tried to find her. I couldn't. I just know her name, no surname, no family name. So I couldn't reach her. Now, sadly, the truth is, by not knowing the mother's surname, he's going to have a very hard time tracking down his son. Not impossible, but very difficult. But judging by his emotions here, judging by just how sensitive he is to this subject of children, what he later says to the camera crew is not really a massive surprise. Having a baby is the purpose of life because you are in your blood continue. I mean, I have a child and I didn't see him. I never have that feeling. Look, I don't doubt his sincerity, but this is a very different side of Sarpa that up until now we haven't really known. This is very different to the guy who just cares about himself. But the thing is, the way he phrases things, the way he says he just wants to continue his bloodline, well, <laughs> I'm not exactly sure that's the most selfless reason for wanting a child. And aside from that, let's not forget that Shekinah has done this once before. She has a 15-year-old daughter, a daughter who's still currently in boarding school. So the fact that Sarpa now wants a baby, well, that's not exactly in Shekinah's plans. I was very upfront with Sarpa when I first met him about not wanting to have more children. So it's frustrating that now that I've moved here to be with him, he's kind of switching things up on me. Now, when we join them later on that day, when the pair have got home and they have a bit more privacy to discuss the topic, Sarpa drops his whole sweet guy act, the puppy dog eyes, the blubbering lip. He defaults back to his extremely blunt style of conversation. Is it impossible for you to make a child again? Is it impossible for me to have a child? Yeah. Notice how Sarpa has very carefully phrased that question. What he asks is whether or not it's physically possible. He doesn't discuss with Shekinah whether she actually wants a baby. 
There's zero communication about how she feels about all of this. All he cares about is whether or not it's biologically possible. Because as we've come to know by now, for Sarpa, his feelings come first. Hers don't matter. Thankfully, Shekinah is standing her ground on this topic, even if Sarpa is hell-bent on his own agenda. I just can't picture myself having another child. I can't picture it. Like, I finally found you and we want to enjoy life together and like... They're... Maybe we are enjoying life, but you are 41. What exactly is Sarpa saying here? Is he trying to say that because Shekinah's biological clock is ticking, she should have another child? Because if so, Sarpa, mate, that's not exactly the best persuasion tactic. It's clear Shekinah doesn't want more kids. That's got nothing to do with her age. Whether or not it's possible, she doesn't want a baby. And in fact, she's made that crystal clear to Sarpa from day one. Let me remind you that on our first date, we like covered this stuff. I said, hey, I don't want to have kids. I was thinking of one night stand with you. I want to f you the, that night. Why am I not surprised that this is the way Sarpa is trying to convince Shekinah? By insulting her, by scaremongering her into thinking she might regret not having baby number two. Like, the way he goes about this is so childish, it's so pathetic. He begins to list out all of the bare minimum things that he's done for her, as if somehow this is enough to warrant bringing a child into the universe for him. I bought a bed for you. I mean, I shared a post with a woman. If someone says that to me five months ago, I would laugh him. With my ass, you know? So what? <laughs> Do you think that Shekinah should be somehow grateful to you? Does he really think that buying a new bed has made Shekinah somehow excited to have a baby with him? Sorry, Sarpa, I'm afraid that's not how it works. And the more you push, the more you try blackmailing her and backing her into a corner, the less she's gonna back down. This is the one issue that Shekinah is holding firm on. Sarber needs to figure out what's more important to him. Does he want to have a child or does he want to be with me? Because he cannot do both. You know what though? There's something fishy about all of this. Like Shekinah said, she and Sarpa talked about all of this. They agreed that they didn't want children. But now, out of the blue, after things seem to have got more serious with Shekinah, suddenly he's dropping this bombshell. It begs the question, does Sarpa genuinely want a baby? Or is this his way of getting out of the kitchen because he can't stand the heat? Is this yet another cowardly way to end a relationship?